Okay, hi, 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 hi. I have a very good news for livestock farmers in Ghana. You do not need to worry about feeding your animals anymore. No free range with this right here. Semencia grass seeds by farming in Africa. So I'm going to engage the brain behind this to talk to us about this beautiful innovation so that you feed your animals and they will grow healthy to produce more meat, more milk. Fridge, you're welcome to Saji360. Thank you very much. Talk to us about Semencia grass seeds. Nice packaging though. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so this um, this is basically um, a grass, what we call forage, mm -hmm. for, for animals. I think um, if you know us, then you know that our mission is to revolutionize the livestock industry in Ghana. And when we decided to go into livestock farming, mm -hmm we realized that livestock farming hasn't changed over the years. If you go back 50 years, how we were doing cattle farming, nothing has really changed. Yes. It's still the same way. And, you know, we are very ambitious with whatever we do. So we know that we wanted to scale. And a lot of our communities where we have our farms are also a farming community. Therefore, mm -hmm. there's a lot of issues with cattle railers, goat railers, and crop farmers, okay. and which has led to death, not just in Ghana, but all over Africa, even yeah. in Nigeria. Yeah. That's so true. we didn't want to associate ourselves with such calamities. Mm -hmm. And therefore we, we asked ourselves this question, why are the animals out mm -hmm. and not confined? And okay. they are out for two reasons. Number one, to look for food, and number two, to look for water yes water was very easy even though it wasn't that easy for us we had to drill three boreholes on our land to get water but finally we did um but the rest was feed i know most of you that are into livestock farming you're going around picking like cassava peels mm -hmm. and so on yeah but with our ambitious vision of owning a lot of livestock how many cassava peels can we pick from the street so we started to step outside Ghana since we didn't find what we were looking inside Ghana. So we traveled around the world. We went to Mexico, we went to the US, um, and we're basically asking farmers, how are they doing it? I went to a farm, a ranch that had about 70,000 cows. And wow. yes. And I'm like, how are you doing this without them grazing? You know, and he will show me all the feed, the processing feed and everything they have. But unfortunately, none of I couldn't find any of those things in Ghana. Yeah. So I continued my research and that's when I discovered um, this seed, which is popularly known in Latin America. So okay. Mexico, Brazil, Colombia, and basically that's all what they grow and to feed um, their their livestock mm. so i decided to trace them and um, started engaging with them i got a sample of about five kg brought it to my farm grew it it did very well mm. my animals loved it i saw the improvement in their weight because this grass actually contains about 18 percent mm. protein oh, okay. whilst our local ones are containing about four percent mm. so definitely the nutrition value is very mm -hmm. high yeah. So I was like, okay, this is great. So I grew it for my livestock. And the great thing about this grass is, you know, once you plant it in about six weeks, it's ready to be harvested or to be grazed on. Mm. And I wanted to spread it. So I decided to uproot all of them, cut it into pieces, the, okay. the root, yeah. and then transplanted it. So I moved from about one acre to having about 11 acres of it. Oh, just so by, it yeah. means when you plant the seed, yeah. After harvesting, you do yeah. not need to buy another oh, pack no. of seed. No, no, no. Oh, no. you can grow the. Yes, wow. it will that's, last that's for about value. thirteen to fifteen years. Oh, is that? Yes. <laughs> wow. Yes, and you, you know, you whether you harvest or you allow them to graze on, mm. in the raising season you leave it for about four or five weeks, it will grow back again, and then you cut again. So you will do that time over and over and over um you know in the rainy season in the dry season it will not die it mm -hmm. will still stay fresh but obviously you're not going to have the yield that you were having in the rainy season okay right so um i know that animals eat a lot yeah what would be your advice 
if I grow it, should I allow the animals to feed? Mm -hmm. Then I grow again. Yeah. Or you would advise that it's always processed. Yeah. So that you have excess mm. to feed the animals. Mm. Um, what I always advise farmers mm. to do is to start your feed before you even introduce the animals. Okay. Right. So if you're a new farmer and you have a land, you know, you don't go in and buy your goats and cows first mm -hmm. and then think about what they will eat. Yeah. You rather plant your feed first. Mm -hmm. And what our, the advice will be is once you plant your feed, I mean, we're about to enter into the rainy season mm -hmm. now. Yeah. So best time to plant it. Once you plant it, harvest it a couple of times and store it. Mm -hmm. Because even though you can let your animal feed on it directly, mm -hmm. the protein content is actually higher when it's dried. Oh, okay. And as a farmer, you actually want to have hay at your farm mm. because it also helps them to drink water. Mm. We all know how important water is to our body. Yes. When they are feeding on forage all the time, they don't drink water. Wow. It depends, just like human beings, it depends on what food you eat. Yes, yes. If you eat banku, you drink more water, yes. <laughs> right? Corn is very dry. But if you're eating certain kind of food because of the moisture content, your body doesn't need much water, water, so you don't even drink it. But that water is still not the same. Mm. Right. Um, so as a farmer, you always need hay at your farm. So my advice is you plant this first, harvest, have a bit, depending on the size of livestock you're bringing in. Mm. So if I'm bringing in 10, then I want to make sure I have a certain amount of food before I even bring them in. So once you have the food and you introduce them, now you can balance it. Right. Okay. So is there any special treatments you will give to the grass, yeah. I mean the seed, the seed when you when you plant it, um, or you just plant it and you expect the magic to happen. Um, it's grass, mm. so it's very tough and especially oh, okay. tough. So this grass is originally from Africa, actually. It's originally from Uganda. Wow. Yes, it's originally, but we didn't make good use of it. So they took it to Mexico and Brazil, and they had modernized it no, and that when you watch these <laughs> telenovelas you see a lot of ranches yes with the hair yeah, grass yeah 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 so i've been wondering how did they do it because their animals look so healthy yeah 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 and you're always like it's always a delight to watch the animals yeah because yeah. if your if your car walks 10 kilometers to go and eat and 10 kilometers back to their ranch it burns all the calories yeah, yeah. so at the end of the day that cow is just eating using it eating using mm. it just like human beings if you eat and you exercise what do you do you get rid of you the fat yeah but if you eat and you stay at one place except you or me then you won't gain anything because mm. you know it doesn't work <laughs> on me <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, but most people if you eat and you don't go anywhere mm. that's when you gain your weight and that's the same thing with animals as well um so in terms of treatment you don't need any special treatment okay it's, it's grass and as i said it's very tough so mm. um you plant it one foot interval both horizontal and vertical and you put four in a hole you know four in a hole four in a hole you cover it just like you plant your maize mm. and then you we mostly plant it in lines, in lines. yeah okay. and then once it joins together then it becomes a cover crop so mm -hmm. you don't even have to take care of weeds okay. you know because weeds cannot grow under it um yeah and then that that's all what you need to do and it's just a matter of harvesting or grazing on it when mm. it's about four feet um tall okay so how, how is the harvesting done you use yeah. cutlass or whole what it depends on the size mm. and what is available to you. to you when i started i used cutlass so you know when it's harvesting period i will hire guys in my neighborhood mm. and they will come and weed it and i will collect it and dry it Okay. Once I dry it for about three days, then I will compress it in a wooden box mm. and then tie it with a rope and pull it out. You know, okay. so once I pull it out, I have the formation. Mm. Let me give you a, a, a typical illustration. So a carpenter makes a box for you, mm -hmm. whether a rectangle or whether a, a square, mm. makes it for you. And then you spread two, three rope. So you put a rope in the box and you make sure that the rope goes down, mm. goes down. Yeah. And then you put one to um, vertical as well. So two rope horizontal, two rope vertical. Mm. And then now you put the grass inside the box with the rope inside okay. and you press it. You press it as much as you, you can. can. You can stand on it, press it. Don't forget you have one end of the rope you want. So now you bring them and you tie it on top. You bring them, you tie them, you bring this, you tie them. Hey, that's the shine, <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, so we are going to talk about cost. Yeah. I'm going into goat farming because of this, because this yeah. one, yeah, I need to make money. So yeah. how much does it cost? And how much of, how many of this pack would you need yeah. for, let's say, an acre of farm? Yeah. So it costs about, I think, 250 cities okay. um, for a gram. And you will need about one, one kg for one acre um, of land. Okay. Yeah. So, so like two of these? Yeah. So, like, so this is 500. So two of these for an acre of land. For an acre of land. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, what else do we need? Before we come to your vision yeah. about livestock in Ghana mm -hmm. and why you even came back to Ghana yeah. to start this whole, whole project. Yeah. When I came to the office, I mean, it's kind of technologically inclined. Yeah. Looking at the content you create online. Yeah. Actually, before... 2024 let me say when i started following you um late part of 2022 or i think early 2023 yeah. i thought you were only a content creator in the agri space yeah i didn't know you have something like this until i started seeing semencia farms semencia farms you be with goats babies and others hey, what is this guy doing yeah <laughs> he's, he's holding people's goats yeah. so whilst we are continuing the conversation yeah. around semencia grasses right. yeah. why did you come back in the first place because a lot of us are even selling our houses to go abroad <laughs> <laughs> but you decided to come back yeah. and you are doing great yeah mm. um thank you i i didn't know i was doing great but oh I'm, yeah I'm you are i mean <laughs> so. for someone like me you keep motivating yeah. me you may not know but yeah. from afar yeah. you inspire a lot of people like me thank seriously you. yes thank you um mission accomplished then. <laughs> um, that was the whole goal um so Officially, I, I came back um, because I was uh, recruited um, by Uber to actually come to Ghana and start Uber in Ghana. So, oh. yeah, that was 2016, and that's why I came to Ghana. Mm. So, yeah, I used to live in San Francisco and, um, yeah, got the job and did a bit of training in, at the Uber office in San Francisco and was sent down here mm. um, to start the company. So I moved here and started, you know, with the team that I I, I had here and um, built it for about two years and um, decided to resign and go focus on education. Education is something that I'm very passionate about. So when I was in um, London um, studying, I had a vision to build a school in my community mm. after seeing the impact of education in my life and how different it was um, studying abroad so i started that project went to us um, went into a lot of competitions won some money brought it back started wow. my school and it had got into i think grade five or so when mm. i was leaving uber so i decided you know i wanted the vision i have to you know be implemented um, so I decided to quit and go stay in the village and um, take care of the kids and train the teachers and do everything that I I can to help improve mm. education so um, that, that was when I realized that the school wasn't um, feeding the kids with enough protein okay. so I decided to start a farm to feed the school is it a school in um Bacon. Bacon. yes oh okay yes yeah, so that's how the farm journey came so mm. i started the school the farm to feed the school and then when i went there and i realized that i wanted to know more and i couldn't find the details and the what i was looking for you know knowing me and problem solving i was mm. like okay if this is if i can find this that means a lot of people cannot find it yeah. as well so let me go ahead and create a youtube channel that is actually going to put everything i do out there um so that tomorrow if somebody also wants to go into it or looking for something they can find um uh, what i've done and hopefully build on that and don't repeat the mistakes that i will do you know in this process so that's how it all started wow um you know the interesting <laughs> thing about what you just told me i think oh. i read a comment on social media before i don't know whether it was under your post or mm. somewhere yeah someone said okay this guy was abroad and he's broke now he's back in ghana to create content and get money oh, so, i read that comment before so as you are telling i'm actually me, i'm actually broke you're so. not I mean, <laughs> you have money. to have come from san francisco to ghana to start uba is that a broke person i mean yes <laughs> Can you know, money, money goes and comes so maybe oh. at some point i wasn't but now i am oh, no, but i think it's 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 very good that 
I stayed in the village actually because where I saw the school, it doesn't look like a city. Yeah, yeah. It's a village, a typical yeah, yeah. village, of course. Mm-hmm. But I decided to start your life there as mm-hmm. after you resigned from your Uber job in Ghana. Mm-hmm. Wow, Fred. Yeah. What kind of characteristic <laughs> do you have that we don't have? Because some of us are yearning to go back home, to go abroad. <laughs> and you are here. I, I'll give you a quick answer. Mm. Uh, what somebody told my mom that I'm cursed. Somebody, so cursed. Yeah, yeah, somebody came to the farm and I was um, working there and he asked my mom. I was actually making um, the mud for, for, um, for yam, mm. you know, and I was sweating and holding my hands, <laughs> and he's and and the guy was a, a laborer, my mm. mom. But I I wanted to I haven't I hadn't done it in years. You know, mm. I grew up in the village, right? So I was um and I used to do hundred, and there was point I couldn't and I cried. Um, but I wanted <laughs> that experience back, so I, I challenged myself that I was going to do fifty. Okay. And my mom likes hairs very big, so mm. it was a challenge. So she took a couple of laborers from the community to come. So we all went and together early morning, we started. And then in the conversation, somebody told them that I am Semenshia and they couldn't believe it. <laughs> so then they went to my mom to say, oh. is that Semenshia? And they were like, yeah. And they're like, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, ask my mom, why am I cursed? Why would I leave the US I mean, yeah. with everything and be doing this work? But how, um, how, how did she take it in the first place when you decided to come back to Ghana and be doing this work? Um, really first of all, even Uber mm. was because to most people it was just a taxi company. Yeah. So that was the most difficult part. So um, I remember when I was coming, I actually came with my American, you know, um, hosted moms and okay. parents there because it was like, come and help me explain what Uber is um, <laughs> to my parents so that they don't say, because they were like, you left the US to come and start a taxi company in yeah. Ghana, you know, um, until finally my mom started seeing it on the news and media and it's like, hey, I saw the company, you know, and mm. and then people started getting understanding of it. But I think people will always have a reason to question you, but um, you need to just believe in yourself and, mm. and, and follow your passion and dreams. To me, it was an opportunity to um, start something from afresh. You know, I've, I've been building companies since I was like almost 18, you know, wow. so I, I love building new companies mm-hmm. i get bored easily but i i love building it um <laughs> so um it was an opportunity for me and i'm glad that um you know it got the success that it it, it deserves and uh, now i'm farming you're a great man <laughs> seriously <Thank you. laughs> I, I think um with what would my has been preaching across africa you are a typical example of it mm. coming back to start great things building uber from scratch resigning to start a school now semesha farms farming in africa and all these things you are doing yeah. well done thank you and we you motivate people like us mm. and we hope that a lot of people you will follow your footsteps mm. so anytime you need training or anything about livestock farming in africa is here for you mm. and with their semesha grass i think you don't have to face any difficulty feeding your animals like mm. you said before you start you need to even start growing the grass before you begin with your livestock so thank you for watching this video it's quite educative we got personal with him how he started and everything he's a very busy man it was difficult getting him so thank you for joining us on society 360 we are grateful thank you okay? very much all right it's a bye, bye. i'm going to eat goats <laughs> See? i'm going to eat the goats that they, they, they bought from uh, from i'm going to collect mine uh, and then slaughter they are so huge <laughs>